of our newsletter here at MachineControlOnline.com. I'm going to use this video as my article submission, and I would like to discuss the anatomy of a 3D dozer. Now, this will be elementary to a lot of people, but for most of the market, the way the dozer or machine is monitored, where the sensors are placed, is still a bit of a mystery. Many of the sensor placements for the dozer will apply to other machine types, such as landfill compactors, scrapers, and some machine types will require more sensors, and we'll get into that in later columns. But for now, let's just start with the basic dozer, and let's break this down into dozer one, two, three. One of the key components for the system is the control box. The control box contains software, and it's the user interface for the operator. Regardless of however many sensors that you might have on whatever machine type, this is what the operator sees, and it pulls in all of the measurements from the various sensors, giving you cut and fill, as well as other information. So the control box is a key component for the system. In this example, here we see the GNSS receiver safely tucked inside the cab out of the weather. This is a fairly expensive piece of equipment. So they are made ruggedized, but the more you can do to take care of them, the better. We have the GNSS antenna located on top of the machine. Now this particular configuration, very simple. I have a control box in the cab, GNSS receiver in the back, everything has power. I run the cable to the antenna on the roof of the machine, measure down, and I'm getting track elevations. I'm not getting blade articulation, and I'm not getting machine tilt, uh, pitch roll, any of those are not being monitored in this example of Dozer 1. Dozer 2 is similar to Dozer 1, except we're going to take it a step further. Here we have the control box, as, as discussed in Dozer 1, the GNSS receiver, but instead of the antenna being on the roof of the machine, it is on the blade. So as opposed to measuring down from the roof and getting track elevation, which is a fixed position, we're now going to put a mast on the dozer blade so that we can get blade elevation. That way if the dozer is sitting still, rather than getting that static position of the tracks, we can get position when the blade is lifted and lowered. We can see the antenna on top of the mast. So that's dozer two, taking it just a bit further, transferring the elevation from the roof of the machine out to the blade of the machine. Dozer 2. Dozer 3 expands on Dozer 2, obviously. Again, the control box, software inside, the interface for the operator. GNSS receiver tucked into the cab with an external antenna, in this case progressing from Dozer 2. On the blade, we see the mast and the antenna on top of the mast. So now I've got my blade elevation, but in addition to that, now I can monitor cross slope because there is an axial sensor placed, as you can see in the video, that will monitor the blade's tilt left and right, giving me the elevation of the blade measured down from the antenna to the ground, and I'm also getting, at the same time, the left and right, the cross slope movement of the blade. All of these are fed in real time so that no matter where I'm working, I can see my position relative to the design getting real time cut and fill. Dozer 3. Dozer 4 would be adding the hydraulic component, hydraulic controls. This way, rather than watching the display screen and the operator responding to adjust and control the dozer blade, the hydraulic module would simply automatically reference that digital terrain model and sculpt and control the blade 
as you achieve design. Thank you for visiting MachineControlOnline.com. Drop me an email anytime at editor at MachineControlOnline.com. Thank you.